Mmm, it's a nice day to go slacklining. Blizzard. The conditions that greet the team at the top of the mountain are intense. A snowy blizzard is sitting across the peaks, temperatures are sub-zero, and the combination of six inches of fresh snowfall and low cloud has created a whiteout. Yeah, they're basically planning to abseil down, I think attach the slack line to some bolts that are going to be in the cliff. Well, my watch here says uh, that we're at uh, 2,660 metres above sea level, and uh, he's dangling from a rope. OK, perfect for me. Good to give them a challenge. <laughs> Don't want to make it look too easy. <laughs> As the High Line is rigged, Danny is being quietly observed by psychologist Dr. Ian Tharp. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> How is it? Windy. Windy. <laughs> it's just crazy. That's awesome. The line is completely fro frozen, so it's really slippery. <laughs> yes. It looks just so fun. I just want to... Even if I only take two steps and fall, I just want to do that. Danny's reaction to the cliff edge and the highlining tells Ian everything he needs to know. The key to understanding why Danny is drawn to extreme risk may lie in the balance of two very different systems in his brain. Across a number of biologically based theories of personality, we have these two systems that always seem to appear. There's an approach system and an avoidance system. Uh, and the approach system is sensitive to rewards pleasurable things, thought to be primarily driven by the neurotransmitter dopamine that's sensitive to these rewards and also sensitive to sort of triggering your incentive and motivation when you can see that high, high wire in the distance and you're thinking, oh, that looks fun, that looks fun. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter linked to a feeling of reward from many activities like eating, gambling, taking risks and even sex. But working against its effect is a separate system. The second main system is an avoidance system. This sort of encompasses both the idea of sort of fear and also the idea of anxiety. And that's related to a separate system in the brain, primarily related to uh, the transmitter serotonin. That's often involved, involved in sort of mood regulation. If you think about the balance between those two systems, that might explain why some people are able to cope with the anxiety of approaching a cliff, because their, their fear system, for example, might not be as reactive to that situation, and their drive to sort of get across and enjoy and experience the sensation of being on the high line might be greater than the fear. Is there any way 